today to meet the chairman and chief executive officer and the president, chief operating officer of our company. And it's the beginning of a new era. The first meeting I had with these gentlemen, they said, Dick, we want to meet each and every one of your people and shake all their hands. I said, that might take a little while. But these guys, I've, I've already got to know them. They're really dynamic people, creative people. But the thing I like most about them, they're just plain ordinary people. So please now, welcome Michael Eisner and his lovely wife Jane, and Frank Wells and his wife Luann. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Last time I was here, I waited an hour for Space Mountain. <laughs> so it's a tremendous pleasure to be here. Uh, actually, uh, I'm an expert on uh, the Disney organization. I have been to Disneyland about 3,000 times. <laughs> I have three boys. And uh, I moved to California about 10 years ago. And I have a lot of cousins and a sister. And every time they come to California, we go to Disneyland. So I've been on uh, a Pirates of the Caribbean about 5,200 times. <laughs> Actually, uh, I have uh, wanted to be involved with a Disney organization uh, for all my life. I grew up, as uh, most people in my generation did, uh, on Walt Disney Entertainment. And uh, my family, uh, nobody in my family is in the entertainment business. Uh, most of them are lawyers or uh, professional people of some kind. And uh, when I was in college, uh, there was a girl I wanted to go out with <laughs> who was not my wife. <laughs> she wasn't there, I hadn't met her yet, who was in the theater department. And uh, she wouldn't go out with me, and I figured if uh, I went to see her in a play, she'd go out with me, and she still wouldn't go out with me. And I finally wrote a play, which was terrible, but she performed in it, and I thought that would make her happy, and it did, but she still wouldn't go out with me. <laughs> At any rate, that's how I got interested in the entertainment business. I then uh, have to graduate from college, join the guest relations department of NBC, uh, where I was a page, and I worked on... Uh, the Price is Right and Jeopardy and Let's Make a Deal and uh, the old Jack Parr show. At any rate, I, I got involved with the entertainment business and I loved it. Uh, I also realized the entertainment business was much more than uh, just the NBC television network. Uh, uh, I used to spend a lot of time at the New York Boat Show and the New York Sports and Vacation Show. And then one thing led to another and I really got the bug in the entertainment business and I, I joined ABC. I had met my wife by that time. She was not an actress, so I didn't have to write a play for her, but she did go out with me. <laughs> At any rate, uh, as I started working my way up at ABC, uh, I discovered a, uh, two things. One, I discovered I had a child, and two, I discovered the area of children's programming at ABC. Uh, and I started working in the uh, Saturday morning uh, cartoon area. Actually, when I was at CBS, previously as a clerk, I used to put the commercials in all the television programs, including the Saturday morning programs. So I can sing all the songs from Heckle and Jekyll and Mighty Mouse and Tennessee Tuxedo. Sometime during that period, uh, there used to be a drive-in mo movie theater in Bruckner Boulevard in New York. And uh, geez, I thought my three-month-old son was ready to see a Disney movie. Uh, and my wife and I drove to this drive-in theater to see Pinocchio. I guess that was two releases ago, or three releases ago. 
Uh, and I could not believe the difference in the kind of work that Walt Disney had done and the work that I was looking at on Saturday morning. And it was at that point that I became uh, very impressed with Walt Disney and, and everything that he was doing. At any rate, I worked myself for, up at ABC and went over to Paramount Pictures. And uh, all this time, uh, a peripheral association with the Disney organization. Uh, I was very impressed with the, the entire world of entertainment, the fat theatricality of it, way beyond the actual day-to-day -day relationships I had with television programming. As a matter of fact, when I went to Paramount, uh, I got a better taste of that because Paramount was involved with a resort in the Dominican Republic called Casa de Campa. In the end, that was another uh, <laughs> another uh, uh, entertainment vehicle. Since I have come to this organization uh, a week ago, I have learned more and more about it. Uh, I realize that uh, more than half of the company is in this state, and uh, which I think is fantastic. Uh, last night we were standing right here with the lights on in the Magic Castle and the Main Street, and uh, uh, it was an enormously fantastic feeling. Uh, I want to say that uh, the selection of Frank and myself to work with you in this company, we think, is an indication that the board of directors have decided that this company will be led from a creative point of view. It is... <laughs> I am... Quite confident that our selection also is an indication that the company uh, is not for sale, that the company has taken the position that uh, uh, the product and the people are more important than anything else, uh, that the company has taken. <laughs> uh, I can assure you that I did not come to this organization uh, to watch it be dismantled. Uh, that uh, I came here to try and continue what Walt Disney and his associates set in motion 50 years ago. And that is very simply this. It is essential to maintain the old, to respect the old, to uh, replenish the old, to enhance the old, to modernize the old, uh, and to make that move forward. At the same time, it's essential to do what I'm sure Walt Disney himself would have done, which is to experiment with every new and innovative kind of entertainment possible, whether it be a new attraction here, uh, a new theatrical motion picture, a new television program, uh, a new kind of entertainment, uh, uh, anything that we can think of that is uh, innovative and probably more importantly than anything else, excellent. Uh, I had a, uh, a high school teacher who drove me crazy, actually. Uh, but he must have made, in my four years of high school, he must have made 50 speeches underlining the word excellence. And uh, that has stayed with me much more than the history of Western civilization or uh, English grammar. Uh, the, the, the striving for excellence, whether you're doing a... Uh, uh, a 90-minute uh, animated movie, or you're uh, keeping a street clean, or you're building a new venue, doing it well is more important than anything else. The only other thing I want to say, which is extremely pretentious, and I admit it up front, uh, is that I also read once an essay by Maxwell Anderson, who said there's nothing more important in our society than the artists that the politicians <laughs> politicians will be forgotten, uh, political points of view will be forgotten, uh, almost anything will be forgotten. What will not be forgotten is the artists. And I am willing to say quite confidently that whereas maybe presidents will be forgotten, uh, country leaders will be forgotten, uh, cities may even be forgotten. I don't think Walt Disney will ever be forgotten. I thank you very much.
members of the cast, all of you. God, it was glorious today. You know, we got up, it was kind of gray, and we got to the back of the ramp here. We looked out, saw an unbelievable number of people. We did the same thing at the studio a week ago Monday. I guess there were about 1,500 people. Dick said, forget that. You're going to see the largest crowd you've ever ever seen in your life. We gulped, and the music part to play, and the, the sun popped through. I think this is the, I'm sure it is, the proudest moment of my life. One of the reasons is, because of the gentleman you just heard from, he comes from the motion picture business, as do I, but he's much more than that. I think he's probably the foremost entertainment executive of our time, and that's, that's what the <laughs> board of directors of this company did when they picked the two of us, is send that signal that this is primarily an entertainment company around the world. And that's why I'm so very proud to be part of it and to be here. We really did, a week ago last Monday when we joined this company, the first thing we did was turn to, to Dick Nunes and to Chuck Cobb from our Vita Land Division, also mainly down here in Florida, and said the first thing we want to do is to meet all the members of the cast, wherever they may be around the world, and shake your hands and welcome ourselves to your company. We have done that in California. And the first moment we could, we got on a plane and flew here, and you're going to see an awful lot of us, an awful lot of us. Uh, that's not just today. As we go all over the Magic Kingdom and Epcot and meet you and shake your hands, or tomorrow, Longboat Key, Boca Raton, Sawgrass, as we go around this state. You know, we, there are over 50,000 acres of land owned by this company in this state. We may live in California, but a large part of our hearts and an awful lot of our time are going to be spent in Florida for the years ahead with this great company. We've each come from other companies that happen to be in the motion picture business, as I've said. And we heard a great deal about the Disney family and what it stood for. But until you're part of it, you really don't quite believe it. Until you walk out here as we did this morning and see those faces and you and those smiles with that reputation for service and, yes, that reputation for that word that Michael just used, excellence, you don't really know how wonderfully proud you are to be part of this company. I first felt it early on, first day when I visited Disneyland. And I saw in people's eyes, and as I shook their hands, a feeling for that excellence, for that service, which somehow Walt Disney started in this company, and which has carried on year after year and generation after generation. And I think that if there's any motto, if there's any way if there's anything that Michael and I stand for, it is to keep that tradition, to spread it, to be part of it, and to have this company thrive on it in every one of its divisions. We pledge that to you. The other thing that I think we can safely pledge to you today is that the problems of the company are now safely behind us. The shareholders of this company The shareholders of this company are no longer our enemies. They are our committed friends. We have heard from them. They want us as part of this company. They are supportive as part of this company. They have pledged that support for a long time, and I mean by that almost all of the members of the Disney family, the Bass family of Texas, and many, many other shareholders around the world. We are here to operate this company not to deal with what the price of the stock happens to be on any particular day. That will take care of itself if you and we together operate this company the way Walt Disney laid it down decades ago. We pledge that to you. We are thrilled to be here. We hope to see each and every one of you today to shake your hands and to welcome ourselves with you as part of the Walt Disney family. Thank you very, very much.